Well, hello and good afternoon, everyone. And we appreciate you tuning in to hear the reading of uh, a book that I wrote. And it's called God is Really, Really Real, 30 Easily Taught Bible Doctrines. Before we read the book, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, all of you children from First Baptist Church of Hurricane, I miss you guys. It's, I'm here at the church right now, and it's just not the same without you guys here. And I look so forward to when we can be back together and worshiping Jesus and singing songs about Jesus together. And so I hope you're looking forward to that too, and I hope you're being good boys and girls and helping mom and dad and grandma and grandpa around the house and, and helping them get things done. Well, we're going to get through this thing that we're going through right now and having to stay in and be careful about germs. You know, that can be scary sometimes, but you know what? God is still aware of this and God is watching over us. So we can, whenever we fear, whenever we have uh, doubts about things, we can pray and go to Jesus in prayer and, and talk to God and ask him to help us to be brave. And I know you guys are doing that and I'm so proud of you guys. Well, before we read the book, also, I want to talk to parents just a minute about the book. I want to let you know a couple of things. First of all, um, the book is actually divided up into three sections. The first section is a rhyming uh, account of from, from the time Jesus was born, or from the time of creation, actually, all the way through Jesus' birth and all the way to the coming of Jesus again. And um, so it's a it's a really a good overview, but it's written in a whimsical, rhyming way, so it's very entertaining for children. The, the second half of the book, and I'll just try and turn over to that and show you what I'm talking about, is a section that has Bible doctrines. And for instance, I just flipped over to this page. Here's a doctrine about the resurrection, and here's a doctrine about salvation. And there's even tuck-in questions down at the bottom. So if you read this, this book at nighttime, uh, it helps with that. And then in the very back, I included a section with uh, all of those doctrines. And I have a paragraph on each section. And you can see, uh, perhaps, you can see uh, it's just chock full of Bible verses that will help you uh, grow in your faith. So as your children grow in their faith, you can answer those questions. So you can pick this book up at Amazon, on Amazon, and also at the website of the publisher, which is New Leaf Publishing. They're out of Green Forest, Arkansas, a great Christian publishing company, and they have all kinds of good resources there. But they're my publisher, and so I hope you'll check it out. If you don't have a copy, I pray you'll pick up a copy. Well, I'm going to get closer to the camera now so that you can see the pictures as we read this book together. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll get through all the welcome, and here we are. The first page says, It's so much fun to learn about God, like how he created the clouds and the sod, and then turned some sod into a man but didn't stop there with his master plan. You can see there Adam, where God created Adam. There he is behind a bush. And there's the garden. Well, let's see what happens next. He made a woman from the rib of that guy and gave them a garden with a pretty blue sky. He gave them the earth and he gave it for free, except for the fruit on this one special tree. And there's Eve, and there's the fruit on the tree. <clears throat> God told them, don't eat it or else you will die. They both said okay and didn't ask why. They trusted in God and were having a blast. They did what he asked, but that didn't last. There's the animals. There's Adam and Eve. Oh, I think something's going to happen. I think we know. Let's see. Oh, goodness. There's the serpent on the tree. See him right there looking at Eve. Let's see what he says. Along came Satan, disguised as a snake, 
and held out some fruit for the woman to take. Adam ate the fruit after God said he shouldn't. After Adam and Eve both said they wouldn't. Well, you can see there's the old serpent, the devil, tempting them. <clears throat> now they felt naked in front of the Lord. They looked for some clothes, a leaf, or a gourd. But God killed a beast and gave them its skin, the start of his plan to cover their sin. See, God had to kill an innocent animal to make clothes for them because they were naked and he had to cover them up. All because they disobeyed God and ate from the fruit. Now let's see what it says. <clears throat> because they had sinned, God kicked them right out. They lost all their pets and lost all their clout. Their sin broke the friendship they once had with God, and now life was hard and felt rather odd. There's Eve working, and there's Adam out in the field working. Things didn't improve. In fact, it got worse. God's perfect creation was under sin's curse. Everything good had now turned to bad. God would judge all, and that would be sad. See, there's the old fox sneaking up on the sheep. See that? See, sin brought bad things into the world, didn't it? Well, God flooded the earth and brought devastation. But in Noah's ark, he provided salvation. Two of each kind and Noah's whole crew waited inside till God made things new. See the water coming up and Noah and his family are safe in the ark. A dove brought the news the rain had subsided. And high on a mountain, the ark now resided. God sent Noah to start a new life. The animals, his kids, and also his wife. Look there, there's the dove. See the dove coming in? To Noah, he's catching it, saying the, the water has gone down. And do you notice something over the ark? What, what is this called? What is that called? Is that called a rainbow? Right. It's a rainbow. It's God's promise that he will never again destroy the earth with water. So that's a promise every time you see a rainbow. That's a wonderful promise from God. So they tried real hard to make up for the past. They brought God some gifts, but that didn't last. They just could not work enough to be good. They tried and they tried. They did all they could. See, they're making sacrifices to God. <clears throat> we can't work enough to be good to get to heaven. We need something else. Well, look, something else has come. But only God knew what had to be done. To pay for their sin, it would take his son. And although it hurt, his son came to earth, not as some thought, but a baby by birth. Look, up in the clouds. There's the baby Jesus, right? Jesus didn't come as a king. He came as a little baby in a manger. We sing songs about that at Christmas time, don't we? His name was Jesus, the king of the Jews. He came to the earth to bring the good news. The good news is this. Man's sin is forgiven. Through Jesus alone, we can now go to heaven. See, there's Jesus right there teaching the people telling them that they can have salvation through him. <clears throat> On Calvary's cross, Jesus took our place. They treated him badly and spat in his face. He died there for us and paid for our sin. He said it was finished, and that was the end. Look, there's Jesus taking his cross up to Calvary where they crucified him. And he shed his blood there for your sins and for my sins. 
And if we will trust in Jesus and will confess our sins to him, he will forgive us and save us and be our Lord and Savior. Well, after he died, in a grave he was laid. It seemed God had lost. Hope started to fade. But on the third day, up he arose. Sin and death were defeated. God conquered his foes. Look, Jesus arose from the dead on the third day. We celebrate that at Easter time. That's coming up pretty soon, right? So that's when we celebrate Jesus arising from the dead. He didn't stay in the grave. He conquered death. Now we can pray and ask God to forgive. And one day he'll take us to heaven to live. The next thing that happens, I'm sad to say, sad to tell, those people who don't, they live forever in hell. See, there's Jesus pointing to heaven. If we'll trust him as our Savior, we can go to heaven. But if not, people spend eternity in hell. That's sad, isn't it? We need to tell people about Jesus. But those who got saved, God, God gave them his word and sent them to tell so everyone heard. Salvation is free. Put a smile on your face. It won't cost you a thing. It's given by grace. We don't have to work our way to heaven, do we? Jesus gives us a free gift of salvation. Look how happy they are. They got saved. They're not going to hell. They've trusted in Jesus. So people got saved and got a new start. God gave them his spirit to live in, his, in their hearts. Their sins were forgiven. They didn't feel odd. The best thing of all, they were now friends with God. Look how happy the people are because they asked God to forgive their sins. And they asked Jesus to come in their heart and to save them and to be their Lord and Savior. And now they don't have to worry anymore. They're very happy. God formed them a group and called it a church. They preached and prayed and started to search. They wanted to find the ones who were lost, and they promised to do it no matter the cost. See, they have a church, kind of like our church. They're there worshiping God and singing songs and learning about Jesus so that they can go out and, and tell other people about Jesus. Here are some other people coming to the church, walking to the church. I look forward to the day you guys can come back over to the church and we're we can worship together. <clears throat> they baptized each one and got them all wet. They took all took communion so they wouldn't forget. They never forgot what God promised to do. One day he would come back for me and for you. Look, they're getting baptized over there. They went outside. They had a little pond by their, by their church. Until God comes back, we must learn all we can. We must study his word and follow his plan. He's written it down in his one perfect book. So open a Bible and let's take a look. Look, everybody's reading their Bibles together and they're talking about what the Bible says. We do that too. Don't I hope you do that at your home. We don't have to be at the church to read God's word, do we? We can read it in our home too. I think you will like the words that you read. They get in your heart and grow like a seed. They help you to do and say what is right. They help you to live by faith and not sight. Look, there's a family sitting under a, a shade tree reading the Bible and talking about Jesus. Faith helps us to trust what God said is true and all that he said one day he will do. The time has now come. Let's all seal the deal. There's no doubt about it. God is really, really real. You know, a lot of times when you end a book, you put at the last part of it, you write the end. Well, notice here it says, not quite the end. Because we know that Jesus is coming again. 
he'll take us to heaven someday. Well, I hope you enjoyed reading my book with me, God is Really, Really Real, 30 Easily Taught Bible Doctrines. And that's true, boys and girls, God is really, really real, and He loves you very much. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be discouraged. Um, God is with us. He's always with us. You know, there's a verse in the Bible where God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's what Jesus told us. I will never leave you or forsake you. So God is with us. He's watching over us. This whole um, virus thing that we're hearing about and seeing on the news that sometimes is scary. Um, we don't have to be afraid because this is not a surprise to God. And God will guide us through these things. Best thing of all that we learn from our book is that we can have a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. I hope you've been encouraged today. I love you. We love you at the church. And we can't wait to see you again. God bless you. And have a great day. I want to pray with you before we go. Father, I thank you so much for your love for us. I thank you that you created us. And Lord, even though we sinned and fell away from you and brought the curse of sin upon this earth, and Lord, that's why we see diseases like we're hearing about in the news, because we live in a sinful, fallen world. But Father, you said that you've overcome the world and you've given us victory through your son, Jesus. So in the middle of all these things that are unsure, I pray that people will understand that they can have a personal relationship with you. Moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, boys and girls can come to you in prayer. And if they confess to you that they're sinners and by faith believe what the Bible says, that you died for their sins. And if they will trust you as their Lord and Savior and ask you to be their Lord and Savior, that you will forgive them of their sins You'll save them, and you'll be their Lord and Savior, and they can live etern eternally in heaven with you someday. But not only that, you'll give your Holy Spirit to them to live in them, to comfort them, so they won't be afraid. And so, Father, I pray today that people will come to you and pray to you and come into a relationship with you. Lord, thank you for this gift. I pray that you uh, give us courage, and um, Lord, watch over us until we can be back together again. We ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. I love you, and we'll see you soon.